Welcome to Martini Time. Let's see what the frog brings up. Uh, you know the, the uh, fairy tale of the frog and the princess and she drops her golden ball in the pond and the frog says, uh, I can get that back for you. And she says, oh, thank you. And he says, but uh, just just on one condition. Oh, what's that? If you marry me. And she says, oh, okay. So he dives down and gets the frog, gets the treasure back. Well, <clears throat> without getting further into this, the uh, uh, the frog is a uh, mythologic or mythic being that is a threshold guardian, and the pond is the unconscious, and we lose our treasure in the unconscious, and the frog can retrieve it. You see, our treasure, our wisdom. Uh, our pot of gold, or whatever we've lost. It's going to be in the unconscious. So you need some threshold being, uh, some being that can uh, go beneath the surface and be on the surface. This is why I always see my life in, a, in the submarines, uh, three and a half years of it, uh, metaphorically. Um, like a frog, the sub can go down and above. and. Uh, and uh, so anyway, <clears throat> the topic of this is uh, the Minotaur in the hospital. So I spent most of the day today uh, at Chippingham Hospital where my wife is uh, under, she had a stent uh, put in this morning and so she's, they've got her under observation and uh, she'll go home tomorrow so everything is fine. Uh, a marvelous thing uh, uh, to be able to uh, save a person's life by going into the artery and putting a little uh, tube in there that keeps the artery open uh, so it doesn't shut down. And they do it all. Well, she watched it on the TV. It was kind of like uh, a friend of hers said, weren't you scared? Isn't that scary? No, it was like watching uh, a documentary or something. It was like watching a map or the exploration of a river or something, you know. And uh, so there's complete, you know, just so that's not me. <laughs> Anyway, but Chippingham Hospital here in Richmond is very big. It's growing so fast they can't keep a, a coherent plan going. Uh, when we went there, it was dark uh, or early in the morning, Friday morning, and uh, we couldn't find the main entrance. There were like two old people stopping, stopping, but people work, and they were all speaking Spanish. <laughs> they couldn't tell us where it was. <laughs> And they had, there's, uh, so we, we finally found the main entrance and then, uh, and I parked and, and we got in there. But then the hospital is, uh, is like a labyrinth. And uh, uh, you get lost in there. I got lost several times. And as I was trying to find my way out of the labyrinth, um, other people were lost. And which way is this? Which way is that? And the nurses said, they spend a good part of the day telling people how to get out of this thing. So, I would, of course, my metaphorical mind started thinking about Theseus and the labyrinth, Theseus and the Minotaur. Uh, do you know that story? Uh, you should know it. It's it's one of the most classic Greek myths, and uh, it's my favorite uh, because the labyrinth uh, was uh, created by the king of Crete to hide his shame. The Minotaur, his son, was half bull and half man. So he hid him in the labyrinth to hide his shame, his guilt, his shame for having that, you know. And so, but the but this beast had to be fed. And so, uh, in a war, Athens was defeated. So the king made a uh, told Athens that uh, every year you got to send twelve young people here to the labyrinth <coughs> to feed the Minotaur. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a sacrifice of the of the innocents, you know. And so Theseus. The hero, a Greek hero, you see, he said, well, I don't want, I don't see any, you know, I'm going to end this sacrifice, this ritual sacrifice to what? To the minotaur of shame. I'm going to stop sacrificing this sacrifice to shame. Let's expose it. Let's, let's kill the minotaur. Let's kill the shame. So he went to Crete and he stood in line to get in uh, to, the min to the labyrinth and uh, Ariadne, uh, the son of the the daughter of the king, but is also a goddess, uh, 
said, well, wait a minute. Uh, she was attracted to him. She said, wait a minute. Uh, if you, <laughs> this is kind of like the frog, uh, if you agree to take me away from this island, uh, I'll tell you how to get in the labyrinth and, and get out. So he said, okay. So she gave him a ball of thread, Ariadne's thread. When you go in there, kill the minotaur, but as you go in, unravel the thread and follow the thread out. Otherwise, you'll be lost in the labyrinth. You'll be lost in the hospital. <laughs> and so he did that. But anyway, so this Ariadne's thread is a way to get out of the labyrinth. The Minotaur is a, is a metaphor for our shame, our pain that we bury inside. And Theseus is the metaphor for the soul, the awakened mind. Who wants to go see the shame? and liberate the, the liberate us from our uh, fear of our own uh, shame, our disgusting, unworthy nature that we're afraid, afraid to expose. We're afraid to bring into the light of consciousness. So we hide it with lies, and we hide it with deception and denial, you see. And we're always on the guard that somebody will see our minotaur, and somebody will see our, the heart of darkness inside, you see. So it's a great myth. It's a great myth. But while we were there, we really had, I had a, what, my wife was having a go, I was having a, we came up with some great ideas for the hospital. <clears throat> One of them was that uh, to help people get out of the labyrinth, they should create an app, a Chippingham app, you know, that you can download when you go to the hospital, and it will give you a complete map of the hospital and tell you where you are. So everybody's got a cell phone, so you just get that app, and the, you are here. <laughs> you are here, and you could find your way out. I thought that was a great idea. Oh, the nurse did, too. I'd be interested to see if they get it. The other one, what, my wife came up with this, because uh, when you're lying in the bed and you got this uh, uh, little remote that connects you with the nurses, so when the, uh, the, the equipment starts beeping, and you can't turn it off, you can beep the nurse and they'll come in and turn it off or reset it or something, you know. But it was always getting tangled up in the bed covers. So she said, you need to have a little holster that you can hang this remote in, you know. You know, and so I, and so, and so, oh, that's a good idea, said the nurse. And so I said, if you do that, make it, call it a Tilly holster. And so, uh, and then I thought of all the funny things that you could do on the, put on the walls there. They have a little sense of humor. So when you go into the hospital and uh, you would say, uh, welcome to the labyrinth, uh, be careful, one of the rooms has a minotaur. <laughs> and, uh, or, uh, uh, you know, or if you're lost, uh, you get a, if you're lost and can't get out, you get a free dinner. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, if you're here for over uh, 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 three days, push this button. So... <laughs> But I also, um, you know, I went there and, um, and, and we all have this experience of, of going to the hospital and sitting. And, uh, and, and, and uh, just sitting. Just, we, actually, this is probably the only time that we usually, if you stay for a long time, like I was there from, uh, I think, 10 o'clock until 3, and um, just sitting. And, uh, of course, I had my iPad so I could read a book I'm working on. Uh, my wife had a crossword puzzle she was working on. Uh, but just sitting. It's, uh, and I meditate a little bit where I just sit and, and just uh, uh, listen to the sounds of the hospital. Uh, just sitting. Just, just this. Just sitting, you see. Um, a hospital's a great time to do that. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, but this whole idea of uh, just sitting uh, without irritation, without complaint, without comparing it, oh, this is not good, this should be better, uh, why aren't they doing this, why didn't they do that, oh, this is, a, this is crap, you know, all this complaining mind, you see. When you're just sitting, you, you just sit without complaint, uh, you just sit without resistance, you just sit... Uh, with, without uh, time, in the sense that, oh, how long do I have to sit? Oh, I've been sitting too long, I have to go. How much longer do I have to sit here? <laughs> and I'm bored, I'm bored. What should, uh, I need something to interest me. Turn on the TV, I need to, I need to be interested. You know, just sitting is terrible. Uh, just sitting. 
And so, uh, you know, just sitting actually brings up the minotaur inside. <laughs> just sitting, this is why we don't like to sit. We don't like to sit without complaint. Uh, because something stirs. Oh, this is not right. I should be, I should be doing something. I've, I've got to go. I've got more important things to do. Uh, oh, why do I have to do this? You know, or uh, or finding complaint. Oh, the uh, the nurse isn't here soon enough. Oh, oh, this. I'm gonna. They couldn't find. The, they had a trouble finding a vein to put the uh, IV in. You know, and so they came and looked. You know, and looked and looked. Uh, but it was okay. So they punched. They. They made her arm look like she was a heroin addict. <laughs> Needle punctures, trying to find the vein. And you just sit with that. Uh, it's not all going to sue. They should find, you know, what's wrong with them? Um, in other words, uh, and then, you know, just, just sitting with, with what's happening, just sitting with being. Uh, that's the way, that's the Ariadne's thread. Just sitting. Just, just being here, just being. You have to be somewhere. You might as well, you can't be anywhere, right? You have to be where you are. So you have to sit with where you are, you see. And that's, that liberates you from the labyrinth. Uh, the labyrinth is a, uh, uh, basically a, uh, a, a maze that disorientates you and separates you from the ground, from just sitting. I went to a, uh, well, when I got a job with the, um, uh, this, in Cleveland back in, in the early 70s, uh, it was with the, on the grounds of the uh, Cleveland Insane Asylum. It was a condemned building, but it must have been built during the 1800s. Uh, because it was a gigantic, it was one, it looked like the uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was filmed there. Uh, you have these labyrinth of wards and the windows are high so you can't see anything outside. And everything had been abandoned. All the equipment was just like it, like everybody left, you know. Uh, all this equipment was left out and we used to wander through this empty shell. And the first experience I had in there was uh, disorientation. Where am I? You know, and and I think um, uh, and so this is this uh, what well, an institution that that is self enclosed makes you dependent upon the institution because your reference to the real world, the reference to nature, the reference to your own soul, your own true being is cut off and you are totally dependent upon the institution. When you go to the hospital, they take over your body functions. <laughs> you know, I'm not, con you know, slamming the hospital, but I mean, it's just interesting that when you go to the hospital, you surrender and they're going to stick stuff into you. And uh, if your breathing stops, you'll breathe, they'll breathe for you. If your heart stops, they'll, your heart, they'll beat the heart for you. Uh, they'll feed you, if you can't eat, they'll feed you through a tube, you know. So you can become kind of like a fetus, uh, totally dependent upon the umbilical cord to this mother institution, you see. So uh, uh, the, the, these, the institu these beautiful institutions that, that do with these miracles, uh, also there's a kind of a, a metaphorical side to it. Uh, where we live in these institutions and become like connected to them and we lose our reference to our just sitting. We lose reference to our, our true being, our natural being, our at ease being. We lose reference to uh, uh, our, our, our original nature. So the institution kind of like intervenes and it, keep, and it grows. I mean, my mother-in-law went to Chippingham uh, 20 years ago, and it was one building. Now it's so complex that uh, you can't find your way around, and it's still growing. You know, so it's kind of like an institutional, and I hate to say cancer, but I mean it's it's like an institutional organism that keeps growing, and all these hospitals are growing and growing and growing. You know, and so uh, so we're all pretty much uh, standing in line, waiting our turn in the hospital. 
Uh, and you go down to the uh, Starbucks to get the uh, to get something to eat while you're there, and they got donuts. Nothing wrong with donuts. I had one this morning, or yesterday morning. Uh, first time I've had a donut in in a year, years, you know. Cup of coffee and a donut. Boy, what a sugar rush that was. <laughs> But but the point is, you know, that the institutions, these hospitals are growing and growing and growing. Uh, but the culture is creating the, uh, the stress diseases and disorders that make us dependent upon the hospital. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's, they're in sync. The, the culture that is institutionalized, it, that our institutionalized culture, we work in institutions. Uh, everything we do is institutionalized, has separated us from our natural being, our sitting, our ability just to sit, you see, and be, just our being, you see, has been intervened, and we have been gradually attached to the all these different institutions. The media is an institution. We're attached to that. I'm attached to it. Uh, the hospital is an institution. I'm attached to my wife was attached to that, you see, and I expect I will one day. You know, we all can expect to be attached to the to return to the womb of the hospital, uh, this great mother, and be attached to it like a fetus to the room with the umbilical cord. Then it will take us and it will feed us and all of that, you see. And then we may die at the institution and return to the mother. <laughs> you see, so. We were born in an institution, and here's another thing too. Uh, Joseph Pierce uh, done a great deal of study about this: the the uh, the the intervention of hospital births that intervene between the mother and the natural birth. You know, the natural birth is almost a, 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 a you know I don't natural birth today. Uh, outside of the institution is rare, I guess. It's coming back, you know, with the midwife, uh, without drugs and all that. But the hospital gradually intervened in that, you see, and took over the whole thing. And so the baby's, the mother's drug, the baby, or cesarean, the baby's snatched out and put in a basket, you know, and separated from the mother. And so, you know, this intervention of the in institution. And that continues all through our life institutions intervening between us and our mother, us and our mother earth, us and our mother being, us and our natural being, you see. So the institution uh, is kind of like an expanding wedge, you know, uh, that, that uh, gradually, gradually uh, intervenes so that we become dependent uh, upon institutional life. So we work in institutions. And we, uh, we, everything we do is an institution. Who, who just sits? <laughs> so the only thing that is not institutionalized is sitting. <laughs> sitting in the front park, sitting in the front porch, sitting by a pond, uh, sitting in a deer stand, uh, sitting in your backyard, uh, just sitting, you know, just being without future. You see, institutions are on schedules. Institutions create time. It's time to do this, time to do that, you see. Time to stop, time to get up, time to be fed, time to not be fed. Uh, is it time yet? Is it time? You see. <clears throat> so institution, institutional life creates time and time is stress. I got to get there. I'm too late. Uh, I won't make it. I made it. Now what do I do? I'm too early. <laughs> so time creates stress, you see. So we have the time, the institutional life creating time and stress, and stress creates physical disorders because the mind and the body are resonating or inter interactive. What the mind does, the body does. What the body does, the mind does. The mind is stressed, the body gets disorders. Uh, if the body, if the mind is stressed, the body gets stressed, and you end up in the hospital, back in the institution. You see, so it's all a big circular labyrinth. You see, it's all a big labyrinth. We've lost Ariadne's thread. Uh, we've we've lost contact with uh, a reference to just sitting. The the reference to just being, uh, without complaint, without time. I have. 
uh, you know, when you're just sitting, you're not bothered by time. There is no time when you're just sitting. You are time. You are sitting. You're not like waiting for something, getting to somewhere and everything. You're just, ah, the iced tea commercial. Ah, I'm just sitting. It's fine. Everything is fine. Whatever, whatever is going on is just fine. If they can't find, if you can't, they can't find the needle in the arm, I'm sitting with that. If, if the nurse, if the doctor's late, it's okay. I'm just sitting with that. So, so you learn, you know, and rarely do we, institutions create complaining. Uh, you know, that's what we, what we do about institutions. Oh, they're too late. They're too early. They didn't do it right. I'm going to sue. <laughs> so what is all that about? Well, that's trying to reclaim our reference to ourself, you see. The institution took it away, so I'm going to get it back by suing the institution. Well, that's all part of the institution. Anyway, thanks for dropping in. I hope you find the Minotaur in your institution. And when you do, and you look at it, it will go poof.